God, this, <laughs> this is really good. Did you already try it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I, I love this stuff. Let's, yeah, okay, so we'll get into it. All right, everybody, uh, welcome back to another bourbon show. Uh, <laughs> Ryan giving the double deuces already. That just means he's going to shit himself later this episode. That's <laughs> what that means. That's code I, I, for I got to shit. <laughs> I shit before the, sh- uh, before the show, so hopefully we're that, good to go. That doesn't mean you're not going to do it during the show, too. Let's be real here. Uh, I, I shit solid, but I might piss out of my ass later. <laughs> okay then <laughs> all right we are coming in hot <laughs> coming in hot uh but thanks for joining us uh tonight we are going to be drinking this one right here we're going to be drinking some old ezra seven um so steven let's get us started nicely what's what do you think about that label right there i'm giving it an eight an eight okay straight to the point because yeah i really like the label it's a little bit busy that's why i don't give it any higher than an eight yeah but i think it just looks really solid i honestly don't have a lot of, a lot to say about it but i yeah. like that the the background to it is not like just a straight black it's almost yeah. like a charcoal there's a little bit yeah. it's like it's a chalkboard almost mm-hmm. and i i think that's a nice little subtle touch because if it was black i think that it would be it would fit into the shelf a little bit more, um, mm-hmm. but I think it really stands out, and that gold really pops on that slightly lighter background. Um, yeah. So the colors are really what do it for me. But I like that it's a little bit smaller of a label overall, and that the seven really stands out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just nicely balanced, nicely done. I don't have a lot to say about it, but I think it's an an, an eight for sure. So an eight, okay. Yeah, I I can't. I can't argue with that. I think I personally think it's a great label as well. Um, you're right. It is like a charcoal um, color, not a black color. Um, and one of the things that they emphasize uh, in the in this bottle is that it's charcoal mellowed. Wow. So that kind of fits in with the theme there, right? So, um, and if not, so I mean, we could be marketers, right? This is this is the kind of BS that you just say, right? Exactly, right? Like this is a bullpen session uh mgp since you now own them if you want to kick some bucks our way like we're not against it right like we can we can send steven to you and yeah. no matter if you can just keep him I mean, we don't give a shit yeah and, and if you forget who to make the checkout to it's the guys who were talking about shitting themselves just a few moments right, ago. just us that's just us. like a minute and a half ago yep. yeah. <laughs> we, we, we will sell out anything for money anything yeah you just tell us what to do <laughs> So, Old Ezra 7, um, this is, uh, we're going to take a second here and talk about the company itself. So, it's owned by Luxco. Um, I don't think many people know this, but Luxco is actually a St. Louis company. They're a St. Louis company since, God, the mid-50s, I think. They've got a huge portfolio of uh, liquors, um, vodkas, and uh, Everclear is probably their most well-known thing that they that they own um but yeah so luxco is a st louis company uh they they were purely sourced liquor uh as far as whiskey bourbon goes uh for the longest time they opened up a distillery down in bardstown uh, i guess six or seven years ago something like that um but within their whiskey bourbon portfolio they've got old ezra they've got ezra brooks um rebel rebel yell um davis county david nicholson and uh blood oath is kind of their premier uh of their of their portfolio um but within the last month or so they got bought out by mgp uh not sure exactly what's going to happen as far as their companies go mgp has stated that they're going to just let them go let them do their own thing um just owned by mgp but allowed to operate in there the same way they have um but that's old ezra and Lux Row, and Old Ezra 7 specifically is aged seven years. It's got a seven-year age statement. Uh, it is bottled at barrel strength, which is 117 proof. So this one is a little bit hotter than we normally do. Uh, their mash bill is 78% corn, 12% barley, and 10% rye. Um, so what do you say we dive in and start drinking it? Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Now, this is the first time you guys have ever had it, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Yes. 
I've I had think... other Luxco bourbons though, but yeah, just not this one. Yeah, okay. Not this one. Shit's good. I love it. I That's absolutely really love it. To me, it doesn't it doesn't seem like it's 117 proof until okay, later well. on after you've had a glass or two, then you're like, Oh, now I'm feeling that 117. But when you're sipping it, it's nice and smooth, lots of full flavor, long finish. Um, and it's, I mean, it, it's, it's a top notch bourbon as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's really good. I, yeah. I don't think I've had a <laughs> bourbon is. that has given me such a chocolatey, finish before mm -hmm. uh, i get yeah. a lot of chocolate on the finish they look chocolate and maple syrup and cherries it's like for me it's specifically dark chocolate right like not a milk chocolate like that it's um how do i put this so um not like a sweet chocolate you get the chocolate but like that it's like again that it's like a baker's chocolate Baker chocolate, chocolate. There you go. Yeah. A little bit of bitterness to it, but a pleasant bitterness, not a, not a nasty bitter, a, a good bitter to it. Yeah, not straight cacao or anything like that, where it would be right. like, like, like you know, vomit yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's got some. Uh, I I like brown sugar on the nose. Um, Ryan, you you getting some caramel? I do actually get some caramel vanilla. <laughs> yeah. for oh sure. yeah, right. it's just it's, it's just sweet. It's, it's, <laughs> Ever since I became a meme, every time he's like, "I actually I do." Like I know people don't get. It's like you're still doing the thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. <'em. laughs> yeah, fucking dude. Yeah, they could all stop listening. Fuck him, you know. And they no, have, no, no please don't. Have, you know, we please still don't. keep getting the paychecks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're the first active podcast you're like don't listen to us all right turn it <laughs> off you know this on the nose smells to me like a combination between smoke wagon small batch and woodford reserve double oaked I, I smell like a little bit of characteristics of both and both are are whiskeys that i like but mm -hmm. you have like this sort of like there's a there's a decadent smell but there's also it smells a little spicy too and it smells a little bit like um like brown sugar what yeah. you're talking about i don't know there's just there's something to it there's also a little bit of a sour note too on it you know i think i can see what you're saying to me to me it's it smells it's got a nose much more similar to woodford double oaked than it does smoke wagon but i can see what you're saying right like the smoke wagon i get a lot of cinnamon on the nose and i and i don't get any cinnamon off of this but one thing that I do want to mention is that, like like we said earlier, this is 117 proof. That is, that's a heavyweight, right? Like that's a that's a true legit heavyweight bourbon. And when I nose this, I get less ethanol from this than I do than I did a couple weeks ago from the Wild Turkey 101 less than I got from the fighting cock, which is 103. I still get way less ethanol on the nose than I did from either of those other two. I yeah, I, I get like sweetness and like almost like a berry or like a like a cherry note or something. It's definitely a little fruity yeah. in a good way. Yeah. I don't get the same. Yeah. I disagree on the nose. Oh, do you? Yeah, I think that especially if if I take a if I'm just like barely sniffing it, then I get no ethanol burn. But it's it's there if you breathe in deep. At least to well, me, I'm not saying it's not there, but I get less ethanol from it than I do from Fighting Cock or Wild Turkey 101. And that's not to true me. for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. You can but, be wrong. That's okay. But I think it's smoother than <laughs> either of those two when you drink. Yeah. It. I agree with that as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, didn't mention before, but old Ezra seven has an SRP at about 45, I think. Um, it's very unusual to see it less than 50. Um, like, like, yeah, very rarely do you find it under 50. Um, 
so maybe the SRP has gone up and I didn't know that. Um, and there are times when it's really, really, really hard to find. It's like they release a whole bunch and then there's a long time until they release any more. At least that's the way it seems. I can't speak to it. Um, it would be nice if we had you know, a representative from a distributor that carried it. And maybe they could share that information, but that's something to shoot for one of these days, you know, it would be nice, right? Definitely is. (laughs) You never know who's listening. (laughs) Well, here, I I could tell you, hold on. on. In real time, I'm not cutting any of this. This is real time. (laughs) Uh, In the meantime, I'll go over some of the other uh alcohols that luxco has in its portfolio um so they've got el mayor tequila everclear which i mentioned juarez tequila um pearl vodka i mean that's bottom shelf but everybody knows what pearl is um hey is pearl even in glass bottles or is it plastic no it's in glass bottles is it okay i couldn't remember um it's not that pearl's a bad vodka it but it's not I mean, it's oh, not you, floor cleaner. You, you know what, Dan? What? It's actually interesting. Uh, I forgot. We do not sell old Ezra 7. We sell Ezra Bo- uh, Brooks, though. Um, so Luxco, a lot of their portfolio is actually split. Like, we don't sell Pearl Vodka. Um, there's a few others that they carry that that we don't, even though it's owned by Luxco. They're one of those companies that kind of do a split book as well oh really which is yeah which is interesting so because i because okay. i'm like I, i've never seen it on my end and yeah. i probably would have at this point in five years but mm-hmm. um they definitely split it and it probably goes to our competitor okay the well, I, of it, yeah you know i don't i don't know how you guys operate in chicago of course but i will say that i, I don't think i've ever seen old ezra seven in like a grocery store chain I've never like I'm in Schnooks all the time. I'm in your Deerbergs all the time, specifically looking at their bourbon whiskey section. And I don't think I've ever seen this in any of those chains. I've pretty much only ever seen it at like family owned liquor stores, um, yeah. a Total Wine, a Randall's, places like that. Um, Benny's, I'm sure. Um, like pay- places that specialize in in liquor. Are, is the only places I've seen it. Uh, this particular bottle, I think that this is the only bottle that I've got currently that is from a little liquor store in, it's either Fairview Heights or O'Fallon, Illinois. Um, I'm not sure if, which side of the road it's on, basically, uh, or where that line is, but it's a little liquor store in Fairview Heights, O'Fallon area called Mirage Liquors. Uh, it's right on old highway 50, which I think is Lincoln trail or some shit like that down in that area. Um, but it's a really great little store. Um, it's only been open for about a year and a half now. I stop in there whenever I'm down in that area, but unfortunately I don't get it down to that area all that much. Um, but if you are in the Fairview Heights O'Fallon area, you should stop in there. Um, great owner all of the people that i've met down there are really nice good good employees very knowledgeable um and they had this at like 50 dollars even they had a couple of other things i grabbed but i think they're all gone so um yeah if you're in that area stop by mirage there they'll they'll treat you right so i'm glad you guys like it i i've been a big fan of this for a while and um like to me it almost has a Tennessee whiskey flavor to it. And I think it's from that, like they say charcoal mellowed. I think that might mean charcoal filtered. And that's what the Lincoln County process is. And that's what separates Tennessee whiskey from bourbon. Right. Um, And I think that that kind of gives, lends it that smoother flavor and some of those flavor profiles that you guys are picking up. Yeah, I can definitely see that at least at the very start of the palette. And it changes pretty quick in your mouth, but mm-hmm. it does start something like a Tennessee whiskey. I definitely agree with that. And then it almost becomes sort of like, a, you know, the last time I had something, beside, it was like this, then the weeder, 
Um, and then the last thing I had that, that changed this much uh, on the palate, besides those two, was probably the Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye that you gave me, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, so, it's such a quick switch. Like, it's crazy when you've been drinking whiskey for a while to have something like this that as you're drinking it, you can just like, you can just, as you're tasting it, you just feel it almost switch on your mm-hmm. mouth. It's like uh, when I, I was a kid, you get the, like, the everlasting gobstoppers and it would become yeah. a different flavor halfway through. Yeah. I don't like that. It's very crazy how quickly it changes. Yeah. One of my favorite things about this is how long the finish is and how pleasant the finish is, right? Like, so it's 117 proof. We've said it numerous times. I've said it numerous times, but that's important to know, right? And like one of the reasons why that's important on this one particular is that it does not like sting or numb your tongue, your tongue. You feel it and you feel it on your cheeks, like a little bit of a tingly sensation, but it never gets like unbearably alcohol burn feeling on your tongue or your cheeks. And at 117 proof, that's pretty impressive just on, um, just on its own, in my opinion. Yeah, it's incredibly smooth for 117 proof. Is this the highest proof we've done, or am I forgetting one? I'm pretty sure this is the highest proof we've had on the show. I, I think so, too. I don't know what until, we would've... Until we do the Old Forester 150 here. Spoiler. What, what proof is that? Uh, it's 126.8, I believe. 126.8. Okay. So wait, yeah. So have you high. have you tried that one yet? Yeah, I have. Have you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm. I mean, I'm look. I'm looking forward you, to trying that one. Yeah. And I mean, I do have some birthday bourbon, but we'll see. We'll see about that one. What's the proof on the birthday? Uh, I think it's, I think it's 103. Okay. So I think so. So last night I messaged you and I said, Hey, if you haven't opened it, I recommend trading it or selling it. Right. Here's the thing. I was drinking. I drink, drink that sample out of this exact style of Glen Karen. And I'm not shitting you. The first sip I took, I had literally burning sensation right here on each side of my lips where that yeah. glass was at and every sip it just burned like hell again i'm i'm recommending that's what you do i don't think you'll like it from like knowing that you like decadent bourbons that you like a sweeter bourbon it doesn't have much sweetness to it. It certainly is not decadent. He also I'm likes not... expensive shit, though. So that's true. This guy wears Uggs around, so let's. <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> <clears throat> so that that's just my two cents. I mean, it's your bottle. Do what you want to do with it. Even if you never want to open it, and you just want to keep it there and be like, "Yeah, I got some 2020 birthday bourbon." Because that's impressive, right? That's hard to get stuff. It, really hard to get stuff. It's a su- sweet bottle, too. Oh, it's a very cool bottle. bottle. It's a, it's a very cool bottle. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think you're going to like it. You know what you should do? Next time you're at a bar, at a nice what? bar, order a glass. It's going to cost you 40 bucks, if not more than that to have a little one or two ounce pour of that birthday bourbon at a restaurant or a bar. But try it, try it on your own and ask yourself, yeah. do I want to keep this bottle or do I want to sell it for $900 and get 10 bottles of Woodford double oat? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, do I want to <laughs> trade it for a thousand dollar suit? Right? Like it's a lot of SoCo. You know, to put it in terms Ryan would understand. And there you go. <laughs> God, that is all that. That's like ninety-five I, bottles of Soco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, I wouldn't sell it. I mean, I would trade for some whiskeys that, you know, that I've always wanted to, to try my hands on. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Are, I'm definitely not going to sell it, though. By the way, 95 Socos is actually what they call a name-off dozen. If you go to your local liquor store, you can just order that. Yeah. <laughs> They'll understand. They know it. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in the Bloomington or Chicago area. <laughs> if you go to your Nationwide local liquor now, store <laughs> and you ask for a name off fireball, they're just going to give you a party bucket. They know exactly what you're asking yeah. for. <laughs> <clears throat> so you were talking about 99 schnapps. What is that, Ryan? Yes. They're, um, so it's a Sazerac, uh, brand and they focus mainly on the small size shots, right? So just an airplane bottle, it's a bunch of different flavors. You know, they got peanut butter now and uh, they got, got the know, peanut I, butter one in the other room. Do, yeah. The peanut butter really? one, they, you know, they have like, yeah, birth, I, I think they have like birthday cake. They got like a, a root beer flavored one. I can't, I know they have like like pineapple like a bunch of bunch of flavors like that but it's a bunch of different shots um that are schnapps so they're heavier in alcohol content yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 99 proof you know so they're mm -hmm. you know just about 50 percent, and they knock your socks off i mean you you do a couple of shots of them and you're feeling it but a good flavor so too. that's the uh, yeah yeah usually a good flavor depends yeah. on like you know there's some flavors i i don't like but that's i don't really like you know yeah, I, I so mean, like, I like screwball and everything, but I might not be. I might not like the birthday cake one. It's too sweet, or yeah, yeah. People can look them up, but, but I just thought I would show one. I got yeah. the yeah the peanut butter one right here. Okay, yeah. So so, that, so that's a Sazerac initiative that a lot of these stores who want allocated bourbons have to take those type of things. So okay, like I saw Bo I saw Bobby. He had a competitor that I've never heard of before, but it's basically a ninety nine schnapps look alike mm -hmm. rip off i forget the name of his brand that he's got but it, but it might was, be like is that that 99 or something oh well we had that 99 bananas is that one of those yeah that's, or is that a banana's one of them yeah okay yeah, i think bobby's got one that's like a, like a very similar talking wheatley looking one wheatley's no, no, vodka. i'm talking about a that's a buffalo yeah, trace oh, i'm talking oh, about a 99 party schnapp um competitor that i'll have to get you'll have to get the name for or next time you're in there because i'm like you have 99 schnapps he's like no i got something just like it though okay but yeah so was that at the maryville spot the, uh yeah right off the highway is there. it is the one okay. you're thinking of is that like it looks the exact same it's like a dead ringer for it it's like is it like mix something it's like Mc, mcgill no. or something no, that's Dr. McGillicuddy's, which is owned oh. by Sazerac, okay. um, which is Dr. McGill. They have like a menthol mint and they have a cherry. Um, and that was basically like the very first fireball were those ones. And then you ever look at a fireball bottle, it's a Dr. McGillicuddy's bottle with a fireball label on it pretty much. Oh, really? Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So I, I, the McGillicuddy's one might be a little, they've kind of slimmed down the fireball one in recent, recent years, but, uh, yeah, so not only will you see a bunch of Fireball in stores that want allocated bourbon, but you'll see the 99 schnapps pretty much everywhere, probably, mm -hmm. going forward. And okay. they have party buckets of those, too. <laughs> <laughs> a, little more, a little more variety than the Fireball. If you, you know, get sick of the cinnamon. Yeah. They might have a 99 cinnamon, too. I, I'm sure they do. What's the, but, what's the yeah. proof on uh, Fireball? 66.6. 33.33 they do it intentionally or it's either 66.6 or 66 percent alcohol to play on that devil um shtick that they have going so it tastes like heaven burns like hell 66 percent alcohol no, oh sorry no uh the it's 33.3 percent alcohol <laughs> okay okay so okay. it's 66.6 .6 proof or it's 66 proof. proof it's something like that yeah okay okay yeah something very I would, similar i was like god damn that would like 124 proof that would be i mean that's right. no definitely not i mean my dad loves fire i mean the amount of fireball shots i've had in my life is pretty pretty up there 
<laughs> yeah, I've gotten to that point where that's why, like, if I'm doing a shadow, I might go to screwball now. Everyone just to get some variety because you do fireball after fireball, it's like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, most of us feel that way after one. I like, Ryan. A, I like a warm. Yeah, yeah, I know. I made you do a few, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and i like it warm too I, I know a lot of people like there's cold but i like warm fireball you remember when you and i had like like not just warm but like literally hot glasses of buffalo trace <laughs> yeah. at stanley's yeah. a long time ago because they had yeah. a, they had a bottle of buffalo trace buffalo trace by the way on their menu was like one of the cheapest things you could get because yeah. it, it should be well and because everything else was like, you know, it was like, it's the kind of place where you would get like McAllen and stuff like that, you know? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And we, they, but they had the Buffalo Trace just like sitting on top, sitting on like the top of like the, a fridge or something over there that was like, where it was oh, I like think, hot. I think it was the dishwasher. The dishwasher. Yeah. Something <laughs> that was like <laughs> <Yeah>. hot. <laughs> And you and I like got pours of it for like shits and giggles because we were like, that's like bubbling basically. Yeah. <laughs> and so we each had a pour of that bubble trace. We were like, Jesus Christ, this is hot. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are they doing? <laughs> One time we were at the Dubliner, Ryan tried to slide money to the fucking uh, door guy so that we could take our drinks with us. <laughs> because they were like closing <laughs> and he wanted to get like one more round or whatever and he was like i was like they're not gonna let us leave and he goes hold on he's like money talks okay and he goes over <laughs> to the door and i just see like the door guy just going like like that to ryan, <laughs> and ryan like, <laughs> he didn't want your two dollar bill <laughs> apparently not i probably offered him a 20 dumbass i would have been like yeah take it and then when you go to leave you can't bring that out guys <laughs> you know because he, he probably could have kicked my ass but you know whatever <laughs> guess that's why he's a doorman right oh god <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, st louis has got uh, some really great bars though like do you ever go to the social house <laughs> no that that's the one with the no. titties right yeah, I think okay. my dad. Did you ever go there, Stephen? I didn't. My dad would always take me there when he was in town. He's like, "I have a great <laughs> place in Soulard." <laughs> you know, and they like do the body paint and everything. Yeah, yeah. And it was such a dump. Um, <laughs> but I mean, a fun place. But it, like, you know, you order the food, and you're like, they haven't cleaned their fryers, and I don't know how long, probably, you know. <laughs> but God bless them. <laughs> is that is that place still open? Do you know? I think so, yeah. Wow. I believe so. It's a great yeah. place to get shots. Shots of penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Rodney Dangerfield bit right there. <laughs> <laughs> they do have some great bars in, in St. Louis, though. I've never been one of those guys where, like, I, I follow certain teams and I like sports, but I've never been one of those guys that's, like, trash talking amongst family. It's so It's the stupidest thing to me when a grown men – like like Ryan in the concourse will be wearing all of his Chicago gear, so some dumb fan in St. Louis will be like, "Hey, like uh, nice shirt, asshole," or whatever they say, and then Ryan's like, Brian will come back and he'll just be like, "Hey, your hockey team sucks, dude," and then <laughs> and then they'll they'll then the other idiot will go like, "Oh yeah, how's your baseball team doing, buddy?" And then Ryan just goes, "Hey, baseball's not a sport, asshole." And I'm just like, "Can we just go?" <laughs> <laughs> were you were you the one were you with me when uh i wore my brent seabrook jersey to the game where he concussed yeah. david backus we were i thought we i was gonna there. get killed ryan and i were at the wakey wakey backus game i was sitting on the blackhawks side because his dad and him bought me tickets but it was yeah. all inclusive seats at a playoff game of course I was. it was go. awesome it was a drink all you can drink during the game an hour before the game started an hour after the game ended yeah i died fucking I, awesome so, Back when I had money, before I had a kid, I used to go to Blues playoff games all the time, and I'd sit in like row A or B. It's like it's like I can tell you where the perfect seats are in uh, what is it now? Not Enterprise Scott Trade Center. Enterprise. There you go. I can tell you like where the perfect seats are in that place if you want free drinks or if you want perfect view of the of the ice. <clears throat> But so anyway, you know, I I know all about the all inclusive. It's it's worth the money. 
It is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I wasn't at the uh, Wakey Wakey game, though. Yeah, and I was. Ryan happened to be wearing his, like, Seabrook jersey, too. So as we're leaving the place, I thought I was barely going to fucking get Ryan out of there. When he did, when Seabrook, when that happened, I, and I was like, oh, no, I'm wearing a Seabrook jersey. <laughs> <laughs> we're leaving the place, and emotions are already high. Because Ryan might have thought that at the time, but he, by the end of the game, he was pissed and because the Blackhawks <laughs> had lost in overtime after Tarasenko tied it up with like seconds to go. Yeah. And yeah. so we're leaving the place. Ryan's now pissed. Uh, all, everybody's emotions are riding high from that game. And as we're leaving, I remember like three or four people yelling at Ryan, including one dude outside who was probably all of like 5'8". And I remember... No, Ryan, he's like 5'5", five, five, tiny. It, and <laughs> the guy... You, Ryan could just keep walking. We're outside the arena now. Like, we, we're just walking. But instead, after the guy goes, like, hey, super, like, nice Jersey douchebag or whatever he says, Ryan turns around and he goes, little man syndrome, little man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to have to break up a fight. We got, yeah. also, there was some dude in a, like a passenger van Minivan. with his family yelled at us too as we were leaving. <laughs> I, re- I remember he's like, he followed us like down the street for like a quarter mile, and he's like, "Blackhawks, yeah, they're going to be on the on the court on the golf course next this time next week." Pal. I'm like, "Your mom's going to be on the golf course this time next week." And anything he said to me, I just said the same thing back. But your mom, <laughs> you know, the guy was getting so mad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, why don't we get back to this and uh, let's give this a rating? Um, who wants to start? Who who's feeling? confident about a rating i got a really confident rating but i'm willing oh. to go later as well let's have ryan ryan let's let's hear you first i really like the deck you know it's very decadent which i like it's right up my alley um i i don't like it as much as the elijah craig for sure but it's still really good and I'm, which elijah craig re- the uh the uh toasted barrel okay okay which is a little more decadent but i mean the cherry, you know, the cherryness, the berries that were that I got from it, the dark chocolate, the caramel and vanilla. I mean, it all it was all great. Um, I liked it a lot. I would buy a bottle if I saw it on the shelves. It's not in any of my stores, so I'll have to go to a mom and pop probably and get it. But it's a solid eight point four. Cool. Yeah, I liked I it think a lot. It, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think an eight, I, eight I mean, four is a good rating. I think that's yeah. a solid rating. Oh, I interrupted. I interrupted you, and I oh, didn't mean to. But no, that char- no, that charcoal, uh, that charcoal filtration. I mean, I like Tennessee whiskey and and all that, but uh, it's not my favorite way of you know making whiskey. It's not my you know least favorite either, because we had Irish whiskey last week. But um, <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I, I, you know, I still liked it a lot. I I liked it. Like the first sip I had, I liked a lot. The more I drank it, it kind of leveled off a little bit for me. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's just because we started talking hockey and I, I wasn't as focused on the whiskey, but it was still, it's still great. You know, 8.4, 8.5 area. I liked it a lot. Cool. Fair enough. Uh, why don't I go next and then we'll save Stevens for last. So I'm, I'm going to give it an eight one, um, for most of the same things that Ryan just said, I, I don't think that there's like there's not too much that you can complain about, right? Like it, it's high proof, it's moderately priced, it's moderately easy to find for the most part. Um, it's packed with flavor. Um, I don't think it's on par with some of the eight and a half and higher's that we've drank or will drink. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with an eight one. It's a solid drink, and uh, it at fifty bucks, it's a buy, right? Like, like when this is gone, I will be finding a replacement for this bottle, and I will always yeah. find a replacement for this bottle as soon as it's gone. Hundred um, percent. It if I, next time I'm out, if I see it, I'm buying it without yeah. a question. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and here's the thing with it is that. A $50 bottle is not something that you like is too expensive to mix with, but I would never mix with it. I want to drink it neat. I want that flavor that it provides. I don't want to 
mask it by putting it in something. I want it neat. And uh, yeah, so it's an eight one for me, but but it's a it's a solid eight one for me. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I went middle of the pack in the eights just because that the proof it's at and there's really no burn or, you know, the burn is very minimal. It's just yeah. the, the finish is, is so nice and it's long and yeah, it, it's a great bottle. Yeah. All right, let's kick it over to Steven. Let's hear it. All right, I'm I'm headlining. The, uh, You're headlining the tonight. That, that's what my kid would always say. Like, <laughs> You're headlining open night or open mic <laughs> night. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it an 8.8. .8. Wow. Oh. Which is a little high, higher than you guys. But that's yeah. the one I was going to do before you guys said your ratings. That's what I That's what I feel like. I feel like um, this is one of my favorites so far. Uh, I feel like for the proof, it's – here's what I'll say. Um, what I've been thinking this whole time is that it's – I like these more like complex whiskeys that change a lot. To me, this one is at a level where it's not so complex that I can see myself drinking this pretty much on any occasion. It's not like some super weird one. Like I obviously like the weeder a lot. I bought a bottle of it myself, but I wouldn't drink that every night of the week. This is one that, you know, well, at 117 proof, you probably should – but it, uh, <laughs> it it is one that like I wouldn't be selective about based on the profile, the flavor mm -hmm. profile. And to me, it's still so complex that it's almost the same feeling that you get whenever you're drinking an old fashioned or something like that, but with without all the work to it. Uh, an old fashioned, you're you're putting a bunch of ingredients inside your drink to give it a bunch of layers to it, really, and have a layered experience. And you really get that out of the bottle here. And for the the price point as well. Um, I think it's just a, it's a great value. I'm glad I'm aware of it now. And uh, I, I think an 8.8 is a really solid ranking on the sort of scale that I've uh, created so far, where it fits in in comparison to the other things that I've liked. So 8.8, uh, definitely one of like the top three or four that I've had so far. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's your, what's the highest rating you've given so far, Stephen? Do you rem remember? The highest rating was one I gave in retrospect, which was Spoke Wagon Small Batch, which at the time I believe I gave like a 7.9 or something like that. Mm -hmm. But in retrospect, as I had more to compare it to, I I unofficially later gave that one a 9.1. Okay. So that's that's my highest so far. Mm -hmm. And this is I believe goes right under that. And it's right on par with um uh like Antique 107, um, the weeder, uh Elijah Craig toaster barrels in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's a few things real close. Yeah, so so you, I'm I'm actually really glad that you mentioned what Antique 107. Um, I would do a blind tasting with this versus Antique 107 many times over, and which one would win? I I think honestly, to me, it depends on what mood I was in, yeah. what I had had for lunch or dinner or whatever. Um, but which one I would prefer. I think it's a crapshoot. I, th I think that literally one week it might be Antique 107. Um, if I did the same thing three weeks later, it might be this. I think that it's an excellent competitor to Weller Antique 107. And um, the thing is, is that this is a million times easier to find. Yeah. Old Ezra 7 is a million times e easier to find. And you don't have to know anybody to find it. You don't have to buddy up to a liquor store owner to find it. You don't have to make a trip to fucking Ohio to find it, right? Like, you can pretty much walk into any liquor store and there's a good chance they're going to have it. And if they don't, check back in two weeks, right? Like, and it's good. It's really good. Um Witnessed by an eight one, an eight four, and an eight eight. So, so buy it. If you see it, yeah. buy it, drink it, enjoy it. I think I gave this a, a tenth of a percent uh, of a of a point, I should say, higher than Antique One Hundred Seven. I think I gave Antique One Hundred Seven eight point seven. I'm giving this an eight point eight. So I edged out just a little bit, but I agree with you. It's so close that I could, depending on the day or week, I I don't know which one I prefer. Well, put it on the calendar. We're gonna do, we're gonna do a, a blind tasting between the two, and I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't have thought about it until you just mentioned your rankings, and I was like, 
this this is actually a, a great profile matchup in here in and they're different they're very different weller's got wheat this doesn't right like this has rye weller doesn't so i i it, they're different but they're they're neck and neck i think and my plan to get some free antique out of dan went perfectly just how i wrote it up <laughs> <laughs> well on that note let's go ahead and tip our hat to next week because folks next week fuck we got a we got an episode for you next week the kids say do- it's a banger dan you feel free to use that term D- i called it a banger no i mean you can call it a banger i think okay. it's fair to call it a banger okay okay let's call it a banger next week we've, we've got a banger of an episode next week um you're gonna want to listen to it I, I don't love it when you say it to be honest let's take back okay. the banger it's just gonna be a really good episode okay it's gonna be a how about it <laughs> next episode is gonna slap how about that it's gonna be no? a bop it's gonna be a bop you guys it's gonna be a bop <laughs> yeah it gotta say mm, more conviction bop. though mm, bop one of those no nah, not no, nah, man, Hanson's not cool anymore, man. <laughs> was Hanson ever cool? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hanson was cool, man. They I mean, awesome. maybe for you. Okay, so join us for our next episode, which is going to be a, just a killer episode. Uh, we've got a four-way blind. Uh, we're going to be doing Kosher Wheat versus Antique 107 versus Weller Foolproof versus Pappy 15. Um and now Steven just suckered me into giving him some more antique 107. And uh yeah, so there you have it. That'll be three different times I've given Steven antique 107. We might have to do another Pappy blind with something no. like I'm thinking like the I agree. Old Forester 150. We should probably do a, a couple one Pappy what? blinds. Why, okay, why do so... we have to do that though? You you have a bottle right behind you. That's true. I do have uh <laughs> Pappy brand Pappy back here. <laughs> Pap- hey, Papi. That's what that is right there. <laughs> That's I, Papi. <laughs> Another brother showing.